guest speaker for the day, Professor Rosa Lopez D. Amico, Dr. G. Kishosa, and all the invited delegates and friends, a warm welcome to the online internet, online P and community coaching program. Today, indeed, we are very fortunate to have amongst us one of the most eminent and leading expert in the field of physical education and sport management, Professor Rosa Lopez. She is the professor at the University of Pedagogica Experimental Liberator, Venezuela, coordinator of the research center. Her research is focused on physical education, comparative studies in sport, sport policy, sport management, gender, culture, and literature. Editorial member of various academic journals and current editor of the Latin American Journal of Sport Management. She has more than 70 referee papers, 18 books, 10 preceding books, and 50 chapters in books. She has participate, participated in conferences and presentations on all five continents. In 2007, she received the highest research award given by the Venezuelan Council of Universities as well as scientific awards given by the Aragay State and University of Research Legacy. Besides Director of Research and Graduate Studies of UPL, Marake, State Sport Director from 2009 to 2011. In a previous gymnastics career, she was member of the Venezuelan national team, later coach, international judge, and administrator. At sport level, she received various distinctions. Internationally, she received the 2006 the Gold Medal of Honor, given by the International Council of Health, Physical Education, Recreation, and Dance. In 2013, member of honor of the World Association for Sport Management, invited professor at the University at Mexico, West Germany University, USA, and various national universities in Venezuela currently advisor of the Ministry of Education for the National Training Program for Teachers in Service in the areas of English as Foreign Language and Physical Education. A reviewer of Quality Physical Education Project by UNESCO. Some of her responsibilities at the international organizations are, she is the president of the International Association of Physical Education Sport for Girls and Women from 2013 to 2021. Treasurer of the World Association of Sport Management, that is WASM, again 2016 to 2021. Vice President of the International Society for Comparative Studies in Physical Education and Sport. And at the ICSSP Chair of ICSP 2008-2012. Editorial Board Member from 2008 to 2016. Founder President of the Latin America Sport Management Association former secretary of the Latin American Association for Sociocultural Studies. Ma'am, it's an honor and we are blessed with your valuable presence and I'm sure your input will help a long way to, to bring shape to physical education in India. Ma'am, for your presentation, please. Dear all, it is indeed a great pleasure to be here sharing with all of you in this wonderful experience that the Ministry of Youth and Sport from India has organized in this 25 days course for physical education and community coaching. I have been honored by the authorities of the Ministry of Youth and Sport and also I appreciate the great uh, effort from Dr. Usha to make this event possible and to all colleagues who have been so active in the preparation of this activity. So I was asked to speak about the International Association of Physical Education and Sport for Girls and Women, physical education and sport, particularly in the area of quality physical education and of course to address some information related with the Venezuelan context in the, in, in the area of physical education. 
So here is the presentation. I hope you enjoy. And once more, thank you very much for this excellent chance. And let's start. Namaste to you all. Okay. So uh, the structure of this presentation, we, I introduced first Yapesta, but then I will speak about QPE, quality physical education, women and sport physical education in Venezuela, apparent research that is in progress, and some final comments. The map that you see there on the uh, right side of the screen is the Latin American region. This is where I come from, okay? And Venezuela, this is uh, my country. It's located in the north of South America. So let's start this experience with you all exchanging a few ideas of what I have in there, okay? So the International Association of Physical Education and Sport for Girls and Women, the acronym, it's a bit complex, difficult to pronounce, but I challenge you all to uh, learn how to pronounce Iapescabe, okay? So it started in 1949, just one year after the Human Rights Declaration in 1948. So since then, this organization has been uh, promoting the uh, women's and sport all over the world, particularly focusing on physical education and of course, uh, sport and physical activity. The board is formed by members of all the continents. This has been uh, always the motto of the Apescave. So at present in there, you have who are our, our board members until 2021. And I know some of them will be sharing with you in the following days in some sessions in conference, giving you experiences from their own countries related with physical education and sport, okay? So uh, we have hosted quite a congress throughout history. Our congress are every four years. So there you can see all the places in which IAPES government has hosted congress. And our next Congress is in 2021, Tokyo, Japan, that we are hoping due to all this pandemic situation we are living, that we can uh, keep on having our same day, same year organization. But I think it's, it's quite important for you to have a view how this organization that has been run by wonderful volunteer women all over the world throughout all this year has never stopped its four years Congress, okay? Then in 2013, we decided to start regional Congress. Why so? Because it was understood that there were some regions that for them was much more difficult to go to a World Congress. So this, is, this initiative started in 2013 and in there you can see the places where we have been. This year, it was planned to have a Congress, a regional Congress in China, and, but due to the pandemic situation, it was canceled. It is still there because China is in, interested, so we are studying the new date for this uh, event. Last year, Yapesco yeah, proudly celebrated its 70th anniversary, which is a lot to an organization uh, to have kept all this uh, history and with always with initiatives to promote physical education and sports in all those years, in all those decades. We, in our uh, aims, as I mentioned before, we are volunteer organization with those wonderful women and in the story have made it possible to provide and to bring together women from all over the world to participate in projects to promote the participation of girls and women in physical education, sport, and physical activity to afford opportunities for the discussion, challenges, and share good practice. And of course, to cooperate with other associations and agencies working to promote the interest of girls and women in physical education, sport, and physical activity such as an example what we are doing today. We are, we are sharing with now with the Ministry of India, Ministry of Youth and Sport in India, in order to promote and give uh, possibilities to continue supporting the participation, first of all, 
in physical education for all, but also to promote the values of sport and physical activity and women, more women and girls participating in that. So, they, I won't read them all because I know you have the chance to read all uh, the, the letters that are in the slides. Sometimes I will highlight some few elements in there. So as a recognized member of the Association of the International Council for Sports Science and Physical Education, the FESCAB helps to construct international policy and aid work in sport and physical education. So we have been in many places. Uh, there you got, for example, this was in Andhrabad, India. This is one of our former uh, president of the FESCAB. And here's another one, but at that time she was uh, as ex president, and in other places where we have been in Iran, in Cuba. And here was in Minas 2013, in which we have always been there willing and ready to give a hand to support and to promote. Okay. We also sign memorandum of understanding, and here is a memorandum of understanding with IFAPA, which is the International Federation of Adaptive Physical Activity, in order to do collaborative work, which has already started for quite a while in there. There are some members of IAPESCAB and uh, IFAPA. And also, in, 20, uh, in 2014, we uh, supported the celebration of the 60th anniversary of the JAPU uh, celebration, which is the Japanese Association for Physical Education and Sport. Uh, for women, they were created after Yapeska, they were inspired by Yapeska. And also the same year, in September 2014, we also celebrated with CAPU, which is the Korean Association of Physical Education as well for Girls and Women. So these are, I mean, these two are the eldest national women organizations uh, for women and for that have been inspired by the APSKB. We also, in 2014, celebrated with this regional congress in Hashtepe University in Turkey, and because Turkey was also created their National Association for Women and Sport, okay, by Janan Koka, who is a former member of our board. We participated in the Tehran seminar in 2015. And here are the authorities and the Ministry again of Youth and Sport, in which we also uh, participated in activities, diverse activity, in order to know more about the, how women participate in physical education sport and, and uh, physical activity. Some collaborative publications. Here are some of the research uh, EFS has conducted. So here's the first Muslim Women and Sport book. In, this was edited by uh, Tansin Ben, the first girl to visit and have a Howard. They both, all of them, by that time, EFS had a strong focus research in the area of uh, Muslim uh, women's participating in sport. In 2016, we published Women and Sport in Latin America. Again, this was a collaborative work with some of our members and non-members as well, but this was the first book ever published in English about the reality of women and sport in Latin America, okay, academic one. And then the five books here, it's the series of uh, women who have made a difference in physical education and sport. This is on the web webpage. You can download it. And in here, there is one, uh, one of the books is about Asia, of course, because it's divided by continent. And there is a chapter in there about India. And at the moment, we are also working in some other research, okay, and publications. So this is uh, all so far by Yapeska. If you want to move, know more, you can visit our webpage and in here, in there you can also find, I mean, there is a book which is the history of the first 50 years of the APESCA and also then the follow-up, the last 25 years that makes, uh, and was published in 2019, just last year, so you can have more information of all the activities that have been uh, conducted by the APESCA in the, in the long history that we have, okay? 
So now we go to the second part of this presentation that is about physical education and sport, and of course, focus on, on women. So let's start by speaking about minutes. Many participants in the world have found they know a lot about other organizations like World Health Organization, uh, but they don't know much about MINUTES or CGEP or any or the groups that in a way settle some guidelines to the development of physical education, sport and physical activity in the world. So minutes, the minister of sen uh, ministers and seniors officials responsible for physical education and sport. It's uh, this group, it's the group of UNESCO, and they have met, and there you have the world conference they have had so far, and in which the ministers of all the world, I mean, that participate with UNESCO, they incorporate in their, their ideas, and there are some Themes that are taken from each one of them to support physical education, physical activity, and sport. So please be aware that of these two ones, because I will mention them frequently, which is MINEPS 5 in Berlin, Germany, and the last one is Kassen, uh, Russian Federation in 2017. Last year there were meetings like follow up to check how is it going, but uh, not minutes, the big group itself. The last one was in 2017. So the International Charter of Physical Education and Sport was in 1978. And so uh, this document is taken by many of researchers, many people all over the world. We know that because this is like one of the uh, most important one that provided a floor in order to start speaking about inclusion and, and physical education to start pushing all over the world to have it in the education system as a compulsory subject. In 1991, there was an amendment, and in 2015, there was a review that took several years, this review, and then it was adopted the International Charter of Physical Education, Physical Activity and Sport. You can see clearly that the word physical activity was included because it was not in the past physical education and sport. So it's, it's 12 articles, it's a universal reference for ethics and qualitative standards of physical education, physical activity and sport. So I invite you all who are participating, if you are not familiar with this, you can just go into uh, the UNESCO webpage and have much more information related with this very important document. So there, are, there have been many efforts from UNESCO in order to support quality physical education. And I just in here, I just mentioning just quite a few. So it started by the International Charter in, 20, in 78, then 2005, the report on quality physical education, 2005. You can also find these documents in UNESCO webpage. Then the field conference for ministers and senior officials responsible for physical education as four minute five in 2013, which was really very important and step forward to uh, later continue the discussion with QP. So here you have QP and the were guidelines uh, that were uh, presented to governments and policy makers. You also have, there has been efforts together with International Council for Sports Science and together with UNESCO. So you have uh, and UN, the Magnum Declaration and Recommendation, X Preposition Statement of Physical Education, excellent International Benchmark for Physical Education and System. Why so? Because it was avoided by that time to speak about standards. I mean, so it was a real, you know, many international organizations to refer to benchmark because standard was, was a word that uh, translated to all the languages could create problems. And besides that, it also, uh, what could be logical in one area would be considered normal in other areas, it won't. So that's why there was all this process to studies that were conducted in order to review this and finally decided to put the word benchmark. 2013, 2017, at the supporting minutes meeting and 
it keeps going. I mean, I'm not saying that these are the only ones. These are just some for you to have an idea. And I'm quite sure if you visit the web page of both organizations, you can find much more, okay? So in minutes four, in 2004, uh, it was in there, it started all that view to see physical education and sport as a whole, for holistic development of the human being. So, and, and of course, the greater account to be taken in physical education and sport in the curriculum system to also incorporate a physical education to understand not as a separate subject, uh, but a subject that could include all areas to have a holistic view through physical education. You can teach many other subjects, okay? So here, then in minutes 2013, there were three or uh, four uh, important aspects that were highlighted. Access to sport as a fundamental right for all, promoting investment in physical education and sport programs, preserving the integrity of sport, and the guidelines for quality physical education. And this basically was requested by the organization's members by all ministers, that it was important to have guidelines uh, for physical education and sport. So here we have from 1978 until 2015, all of this period, how it has evolved. So International Charter of Physical Education and Sport, and now 2015, there we have quality physical education. And when people ask, what are those elements? Well, we got inclusion. I mean, the elements are much more important to highlight. Gender issues, quality assurance, curriculum flexibility, community partnership, professional training, and development of supportive aspects in physical education. This, I mean, my looks like it well, it's well written in there, and say, how do we cope with that? Yes, there are ways in which, through the guidelines of policy makers, there are some examples, indicators, how uh, they could be achieved. And in, also, there is a publication by UNESCO in 2015 with those guidelines for policy makers, in which there are several examples, and there's one in, uh, about India in there presented, okay? So there we go. We have the millennium because everybody speaks so called. Why this input of women? I have found uh, in some uh, groups of some discussions that some people start asking why this input to speak about women because they don't understand uh, what, where does it come from. So I just mentioned a few tips, okay? So that we have the millennium development goals. Uh, in which gender empowerment, women empowerment was one of the uh, goals. And in 2015, then it was reviewed and not all of them were achieved. And that's why it was agreed by nations then to start or to continue now with the sustainable development goals, the SDG for the next 15 years. And of course, empowerment of women is present here. So it's number five, okay? And we also have to make reference, because you will be studying this in your course, uh, the Congress of Women organized by the United Nations in 1995, okay, in Beijing. So of course, this year was the celebration, but uh, since this Congress was, celebrate, was um, hosted, and there were several events that were taking place all over the world, that of course some of them got canceled due to the pandemic situation we are being living. And that's the reason also why it was so important for Nebraska to be in China for our Tianjin Regional Conference. So there you see the, the, the elements why uh, gender issue, women in power, is in the agenda of all governments, okay? Because the governments have signed their agreements in all these uh, events related with the United Nations to be to make it possible okay, or to make it happen. It doesn't mean it will happen by all of a sudden. It takes a while because it's education. Okay. So I will just mention the following are some slides that I don't pretend 
uh, to indicate that those are mine, okay? If you go to the UNESCO webpage, you can check the dates is there, okay? So, but it's just for you to highlight where we come from, what elements are there, how it is perceived. I mean, we this is something we, the teachers, people who are in sports and physical activity, we believe in that. But to have that on the webpage of UNESCO, it's also very important for people from all areas to have a look to for all areas of knowledge. Because sometimes when there's curriculum development and curriculum discussions, there are other areas who sometimes argue why physical education? Why so many hours of physical education? So in here, it means very practical, it's very simple, but in, the, in here, there are first the organizations have participated and have launched uh, throughout the years to promote physical education, quality physical education in school. So there are some tips. Why doing so? Okay. Of course, this uh, is basically to practically support governments to how to uh, push, how to develop QPE in school, okay? And also to understand that QPE, of course, uh, broad base for social and development, developmental benefits, okay? Practically supporting governments to design and implement inclusive QPE, and of course, developing cognitive and non-cognitive skills through PE to get children physical, literate, and future well-rounded citizens. And it is so important because I know in many places of the world, sometimes we PE teachers are just thought that we just jump, we don't do anything else. And it goes beyond that. I mean, we combine in cognitive and non-cognitive skills, which is so important, okay, for the development of of society and uh, human beings in general. So there you go. I mean, this is how it looks like the quality physical education policy that you can uh, find out physically and uh, easily, sorry, in in the web page. And the ideas for sustainable development begins with safe, healthy, and well-educated children. Okay, and I think this has been a push, a strong push since the year 2000 with the uh, objective of the millennium. So, a quality physical education contribute to the 21st century of education, definitely yes. Of course, uh, to make first life skills education and lifelong uh, participation, responsible active citizenship, physical literate pupils, and skills to grow skills and values to solve. Uh, 21st century challenges. And for example, the challenge we are facing this year, all humanity. So it is um, an important to understand what is it that physical education provides. Because sometimes it's easier in some cultures, in some places, in spite of the fact that the policy indicates that physical education course have the same standard as for the courses, but then to avoid and give the P classes to other subjects, sometimes it's easier in some cultures or not easier, it's not take, it's taken for granted that no problem will happen. Well, in here, I mean, there are some information, some things, why it is so important, why physical influence, education can influence to have better human beings, okay? Quality physical education drives inclusion. Group work supports empowerment of persons with disability, breaks down barriers of challenge and stigma, increases life chances, empower with, okay? Empowers girls. So an inclusive PE class, okay? That's what we need. Social economic returns, definitely. If you have lifelong learning participation, you will have a better society, you will have people. I mean, we don't need to be ill in order to start doing physical activity or physical education, but also it has to be understood that habits are created at a very early stage of human beings. So that's why as children are taught how to brush their teeth when they're pretty young, so it's also important that they are taught why to practice, why to do physical activity, and to create that habit have it since their young age. And we're quite sure that this will make people healthier in the future. But just consider if we have kids 
that are not able to go into school, so where they will have the chance to get this learning coming from, okay? So, of course, there are socioeconomical returns if there is lifelong participation. The cost of not investment, well, is really serious. It's really serious, and we see that all over the world. We know what tax gone, we know about all the sedentary life, and we know, and World Health Organization have indicated for many, many years uh, what has caused to human beings to be and to have this sedentary life, which again, it's a pity because we believe we who are in the process that it's so obvious, but well, not everybody who is in the world of physical education and sport and physical activity is active. And even those who are in the area are not active as well for various reasons because uh, the lifestyle we just drive on has changed to make other things more important than just being worried about being physically active, okay? So, uh, despite the benefit, policy is not being translated into practice because 97% has declared that physical education is a compulsory subject. Nevertheless, 79% have prescribed curriculum. 54% of countries' uh, physical education have received it as a lower status. Again, it's like it's more important to have better grades in other subjects than in physical education, or it's more important to dedicate more hours to other subjects than physical education. 71% of countries adhere to the implementation and regulations and delivery, 71% only. 53% only primary school has suitable trained physical education teachers. And this is a key element. We need physical education teachers who are trained, okay? Because otherwise, who is responsible for the education of the human body and mind of our young children? Okay, so we get here to gender equity. So what does it, is it? Because sometimes we really need this a fight and it's not a fight in the sense that women want to be better than anyone else. It's allocating resources, programs, and decision-making fairly to both male and women. Fairly is the key word, okay? Without any discrimination on the basis of their sex and dressing imbalances. It does not mean treating men and women the same. It means justice and fairness for all girls and women. We are at this stage because when you see the world map in, the, in many areas in which women, in which girls do not have access to education. So equity may mean treating women differently to be fair. It does not mean giving them less, for example, men and women, men and women seen. We know of many examples in the world in which men's team are better treated than women's team. I would just mention soccer or football. In some places, uh, it happens, okay? Financial awards in some sports, the media, how it is portrayed. So when we see this, we always keep reminding ourselves the 2015 International Act of Physical Education as poor because it looks at the human rights agenda, free and universal access to physical education, physical activity, and sport, entitlement without discrimination, and increased understanding of this contribution to human development, well-being, and health, which, of course, is education. So there you see why it is so important to be quite clear on what we have, I mean, the policies that are in there, and how, what we can do in order to empower people and to participate and to make it visible, but moreover, to give chance to all human beings, because I mean, everybody uh, has the right to be respected, but also to participate and to have access to sport. So here we go, and now we're going to speak a little bit about global diversity and gender. Okay, we in the world, we are so, uh, I would say blessed to have this global diversity. I mean, it's so important that, but also that we accept ourselves the way we are. So, evidence of discrimination against women in sports, well, there you got some 
uh, that I mentioned, okay, because it's the most frequent one, and this was taken by the women, the 2000 and beyond UN publication, that you can also check in their webpage, and the representation in coaching, management, leadership, decision-making, position, decision-making bodies, dependence, and the representation in media, harassment, violence, and abuse, social constraints, better codes, and equal rewards. All these elements are the most uh, common that you find in the literature of evidence of discrimination against women in sport. Then we also have, and here you can see the reference are below, there's a list of uh, all the elements that still are very much present in whatever, and you can see here sketches from many places of the world. So the stereotypes according to difference. So women are found to be stereotypes according to their difference. So fewer women than men uh, in management positions. If a group falls below 20%, it is going to be subjected to stereotyping. Results further harmful stereotypes and continues to limit opportunity for all the women to communicate in mean personal difference. Uh, there is underrepresentation in the media. And of course, low number of judges and coaches. This is a tendency now when we review the in, in as stakeholders. I mean, judges and coaches are the lowest numbers uh, women represented uh, compared to women's uh, participation in sport and uh, and also as um, uh, fans, etc. So these ones, judges and coaches are the two ones that have been identified uh, since uh, 2016 as the areas in which you have less women participating, okay? It has increased in all areas. Now, we have the tendency to believe that, I mean, in all some places, the women are not suffering. I mean, all women face struggles in school, all of them, in all countries, in all cultures, women have, have faith, I mean, in different situations, but there are, Okay, so for example, minorities. So minorities and we said in quotation mark. Okay, when we see a group that was banned from playing at that moment in an Olympic qualifier event, but of course later uh, it changed. There was a push from many organizations, but this has been the reality. Okay, so when we consider a group to be a minority, and in this case, this is an example, discrimination based on a religious belief. Okay, and of course, in here, this quotation is so interesting because it is how we sometimes, I mean, we, from one side of the world, we view, we have our own views and belief, but we also have to understand that there is another side of the coin and that other side of the coin may also have uh, a, a truthful and important story to say and their own truth because nobody has, we know, has the uh, definitive truth, okay? So, but there's also uh, these um, women who have been mistreated due to the political belief, women in sport. So here, this is just an example of Argentina tennis player who uh, later in her life in suicide because she was persecuted due to her political inclination uh, in, in in the past. Okay, so uh, in and she's not the only case. I mean, of women who have I mean, it's not just being discriminated. I know men and women. Men have also been discriminated by uh, their political belief, but there is a tendency to be uh, stronger when it is a women. There are studies uh, that. We have, uh, we can prove that that has happened. And this uh, quotation is quite interesting because in here, as I will just read the last part, if you, uh, individuals in the cultural minority might withhold their potential unique contributions to the detriment of the organization. This is quite interesting. Not just uh, from the area of how we organize uh, a group, but for example, in some places of the world, when they have been compared, the performance of women in the Olympic Games compared to the male counterparts, women have done better. So it means there are plans and countries need to have a look at what's going on there. Statements. 
EFS government has participated in several statements and declarations throughout its history. Perhaps the most recent one is the statement of the IAF eligibility regulations of female classification. We have a, a joint statement with IWG, WSI, for those who don't, IWG International Women uh, Working Group. Uh, Women's Sport International, EFS, there are other organizations who just uh, also express and have their statements like Women's Sport uh, Federation, Athletics Canada, etc. So this is the one of the recent one. We have a very recent statement in conjunction again with IWG, WSI, and EFS due to the COVID uh, pandemic and how we uh, think, how what is our position in order to uh, avoid the mistreatment of women and girls participating in, in sport and physical activity and physical education. All the statements, and this is just for your information, at second and this declaration that was for Muslim women participating in sport, International Weightlifting Federation for more dress, uh, inclusive dress rules, because remember this has been one of the biggest discussion and we that has taken place, not just with weightlifting, but also badminton at the moment. I mean, I'm not saying this is recent. I mean, these are statements just for you to have an idea from the FIFA's ban on Iranian women's football team, signatory letter to the United Nations regarding women issues. It was in 2010. There are many statements we have participated, but of course, I mean, together with when we get together several women's group, it makes it stronger and we have been heard, okay? About Olympic Games and women's participation, I think this is the topic people know more. This is just uh, a short, a very short chronology from 1896, 0% participation. And then 2016, here we have the numbers, 45% women in the Paralympic, 35% with four. Winter Olympic Games, 43%, uh, 03 and Winter Paralympics, 23%, So there you see, I mean, uh, how also at that level, and I would say that this is the one that has been uh, promoted much more, it is visible that women are still, uh, we, do, we have a full record participate and it has increased. But I really don't feel satisfied. Say, oh, okay, it has increased. It has increased since 1896, more than 100 years. Come on, for God's sake. We need to work faster. We need to make it able, possible for more women participating. Participate. And in here, it also says that from the top down, we have the representation of women, which is not very uh, high again in NOCs, in I in the IOC, I mean, it has a group with the Women's Commission, but again, well, there's much work that needs to be done. And for example, from my region in Latin America, we only have one woman president of a National Olympic Committee that is from Puerto Rico. It's the only one. In the whole thing, we have all male. And so it's, it's, a, it's a moment to start, I mean, rethinking, because look how many years of history we have of modern sport modern sport, okay, and what has happened. So, in here, because of course, uh, I have to highlight, and this is just an example, in, you have this quotation in which indicated that Latin America is not exception in the lack of parity of the presence of women in sport in general. So, so reference indicate that leadership of sport is an exclusive club of men. Okay, so it's not something that is just said by myself or Yapesta or any of the women's organization. It is in the research and it's indicated. Nevertheless, we have seen, and I do believe uh, that it is because of this push of the objective uh, of the millennium and the SDG that in some countries, in, in women started to participate and being considered for the Ministry of Sport, which is really, I mean, a step forward that I think it was, uh, it was this push definitely from the Millennium Development Goals. So uh, there are many, and I'm, this is just an example from Latin America, there are many afterwards, but look at the years, 
okay, when it has started. But in spite of that, this uh, follow well, quotation is quite important. And again, I'm referring to the region uh, in Latin America because it's uh, my, one of my uh, purpose to communicate to you in this course to speak about what happens here. So here, in terms of uh, parliament, I mean, this quotation is quite interesting. Latin America is the region that has the most women in legislative body. This is from United Nations, okay? Cepal is the region of the Pan American area, 2018. So we have in here good numbers, but this does not automatically transfer to the area of sports, okay? But it's a step forward. And these numbers, again, are, it, it's a product of this push that has been done as many government has pushed to have more women being represented in government positions, okay? But nevertheless, read this quotation, and this is from Chile, okay, quite interesting. So it becomes obvious and this, when they said that it is easier for women to become a nation's president than to be president of a football federation, okay? So, and of course, uh, we all know what it means. Chile is a country that has had a woman president uh, twice. So there we see uh, what these people, these women who are in football and who are in, uh, practitioners, they indicate how tough it is in the world of uh, football. Not just in this region, I have to say, in many of us, okay? So in brief, we take it from the 2018 um, report, the IWG Congress, uh, in which it says that in almost all countries and countries, girls and women participate in less physical activities than boys and men. The development in active participation seems, however, not to have been followed by an increase in female leadership, despite the very many actions taken, the lack of women in different leadership positions. Lack of female leadership was also mentioned as the most important barrier for most women at school. This indicates that it seems to be difficult to increase the number of women as decision makers, coaches, and referees, despite the actions being taken to increase the number of women and girls participating in sport and physical activity more generally. Women are more vulnerable than males to gender-based violence in sport, okay? So, to end this part, we have just to remind minutes six, okay, and the theme, it's so important that supposedly our, most countries sign, I mean, and agree, developing a comprehensive vision of inclusive access for sport, physical education, and physical activity. And two, maximizing the contribution of sport for sustainable development and peace and three, protecting the integrity of sport. Because a national plan is why and it's so important for you to be aware of, because there are more actions that will be happening in terms of women. And one is the Global Observatory for Women, Sport, Physical Education, and Physical Activity. That, of course, is, uh, is a process that is going on, and organizations as, such as IAPESA, BEDO, uh, IWG, uh, WSI are working together in order to um, provide some support in how we perceive uh, the, this global observatory for women's sport to, uh, to work because these organizations and there are many of us have years of experience working in the area, okay? Okay, so now we get to this part in which I have to speak about Venezuela. So I don't know how many of you have heard about Venezuela before, but anyway, here is a brief of information. In the first slide, in the second slide of this presentation, I show you where it is located uh, in Latin America, in the north of South America, and in here are just some details. Okay, 30 million population. This is the square. The language is Spanish and indigenous languages. Uh, there are 23 states in the capital district, resources, oil, gas, water, and national sport, basically, okay? 
in the education system, where is physical education? We have initial education, the last six years, uh, sorry, um, that is from zero to three years old, the first period, and then four to six years old, the second period. So start here is not compulsory from zero to three, okay? But then to this part that in some places it is called kinder, pre kindergarten, and uh, it's, I mean, it's, in, it's compulsory from six years old that kids get involved in school. Then we have primary school, we have primary school six year, the first period one to three, the second period four to six. Then secondary school in some places is called, it is a combination of secondary and high school and technical education. So it is five years to finish uh, high school or you become technical six year. And then you have university level. And physical education is a compulsory subject in the education system. So this, I will just briefly share one experience, one recent experience in 2013. Uh, it was decided to make a consultation for quality education. In this quality education uh, consultation, seven million participated. And the decision was to transform the education system. This call was conducted by the Ministry of Education together with university researchers and the opinion was about quality physical education. The methodology, well, you have seven million people participating. In 2014, the national consultation with working groups and focus group, this consultation in all the states and capital districts and whole community, teachers, parents, students, public and private school, all of them participating, okay? So, uh, those people indicated that we needed a curriculum transformation. And from that curriculum transformation, there are 10 flags for quality education that were, uh, that were indicated. And physical education benefit for those changes that were mentioned by all these people who participated. The 10 flags for quality physical education transformation of the curriculum means quality education for boys and girls, boys and girls, okay? That's very important. And it's very important in the Spanish language because normally we used to use just the male, okay? Um, now, but since the last 20 years, there has been a push to use male and female, the articles. So develop a pedagogy of love, starting by example and curiosity strength the position of teachers as responsible for the quality education, promote a school atmosphere characterized by community learning, guarantee a system for students' protection, create a close relationship between school, family, and community, develop a national syllabus that is integrated and updated, guarantee friendly, safe, and simple school facilities, develop an evaluation system for the quality education and reconfigure structure and functioning of the Ministry of Education. So those 10 flags, when you compare what uh, it's also indicated with quality PE internationally, there are elements that are in there and it was, it was so important, so good when it came out, the results, because we could then push and make it much more visible for the changes we needed for physical education. So, some elements that were important in the past, it used to be 90 minutes weekly, one session in primary and secondary level and high school 45 minutes. In 2011, three sessions per week were established in the National Sport Physical Activity and Physical Education Law. And this was approved in 2011. Nevertheless, the policy was there and the changes don't come immediately because it remains budget, it remains training, it, it, it also implicates training teachers, transformation in schools. It took a while. So the pilot study for the transformation uh, of the curriculum was done in the year uh, 2014. And a pilot study was conducted in 2015-2016. It was reviewed in 2016 and 2017. And finally, in the school year 2017-2018, 
six years, uh, six hours weekly were approved. It means three sessions weekly, okay? Physical education. So here just for you to have a, a just a brief view of the syllabus and how physical education, and I'm referring this to secondary school, okay? Look at the numbers of hours, it's indicated there, okay? To uh, the years, to each year. And you might say, well, there are some hours, and I go to the back in here, that is also in red, participation in groups for areas of interest, creation, recreation, and production. And in here, there are some extra hours for what is called group of interest. And it could be either students can choose science, art, language, music, recreation, or sport. So this is another chance that students have to participate in more sport if they have the tendency, if they love it, or they want to just go and do more recreational activity. This is also important. And why, some people will say, why it was just focused first uh, in secondary education? Well, because in those years, I mean, it was considered that this was the vulnerability of this age, at this age, this is where we have more problems, more violence problems taking place in high school. So that's why it was considered there. There were changes to all subjects. I'm just highlighting what happened in physical education, okay? So physical education uh, and its biological principle as a systematic element for the development and maintenance of the general health of the human beings. This is the key element of the new curriculum. Recreation as a means of physical education, the strength, relationship, school, family, and community, and healthy occupation of free time. Educational sport and other emerging means for the development of the consolidation of body movement skills and ability for breathing wells, and the systematic practice of physical activity in the prevention, maintenance of health, and the construction of a culture of peace for life. So, of course, you might say, well, you definitely know the policy starts and then the changes start occurring if we empower people from the base to make it happen. So what happened when it says, okay, three sessions weekly? Well, we need more PE teachers. And we still, even nowadays, we don't have enough PE teachers, okay? So there is a national training program that was created basically was led by the Ministry of Education to train teachers, okay, nationwide. To train teachers is the key element to achieve educational, social, and health goals in physical education. So the program started in 2015. This is the name of the program in Spanish, Micro Mission Simón Rodríguez. And uh, the idea was to increase and to be in all states, in all states of the country to train PE teachers. Well, it happened, it was successful, and nowadays a university about a year was created, MEM, it was created to continue the training of these, of these teachers. So what started as a project here in 2015, then nowadays is a university, and they offer programs to train undergraduate uh, undergraduate and graduate programs for other areas as well, okay? I'm just referring to physical education, but uh, it's also uh, because it was discovered uh, one myth that we have in education, here in the education system, that just we were lacking teachers of physics, chemistry, and mathematics. And then it was discovered that it was not just so, that there were in other areas as well. And physical education is one of those. There is a high demand of uh, more PE teachers to be trained. And the other reality is that we have in some, in, in some places, people who were not graduated as PE teachers, and this program provided a chance for them to be, uh, to be trained, to become PE teachers. This is free, free of charge, okay? So this is just a brief idea of you to have uh, one practice, one example from Venezuela of how uh, the PE program has been working, and in order to look for what is physical education, it's still, there's a long process to go there, but there are some steps that has been uh, conducted. So, in the last part, I would just briefly mention uh, uh, one 
research that has been in progress and I, I think conducted by Dr. Walter Ho, I was just briefly mentioned. There is his email address and I think later in this course you will have one presentation uh, by him. So the international um, four organizations uh, have collaborative study on quality physical education since the year 2009. These four organizations are the National Society for Comparative and Sport, International Association of Physical Education and Sport for Girls and Women, IFSR, the International Federation of Adaptive Physical Activity, IFAPA, and FIET, International Federation of Physical Education. These are some of the public publications, okay? that has been uh, conducted based on this collaborative work that we have done in terms for uh, understanding of quality physical education. And now there is another phase and it's called the Global Index of Quality Physical Education. It's May to November 2020. It's a second stage of data collection. So this Global Index measures the progress of the quality development of physical education. It tells how well nations, cities are doing to achieve quality programs in physical education at school. So it provides a compass to guide nations and show that it's possible to develop good QP while examining our progress and difficulties by using people understand. So in here, it also explains that uh, the team invites researchers from all over the world has been by the researchers from all over the world to participate in this study that runs cities, okay, in the efficiency of implementing QP. Uh, if you have any interest in participating in this research, here's the email address of Dr. Walter Hall, and I'm quite sure that you might have the chance to listen more from him, okay? And the idea, basically, just briefly, is uh, to have 80 questionnaires from each city, 30 answered by primary school teachers, 30 secondary school teachers, and 20 university teachers or governmental positions or coaches in total 80. So that's what makes it uh, the total group for a particular city. There are many countries that are right now, many cities that are participating, I can tell you. And here are his details, okay? So, final comments. Uh, well, we can see how the global impact makes uh, changes in the local uh, behavior, in the local community, global policies impact what we do at local level. So, but again, it doesn't happen all of a sudden. We need to empower, we need to let people know that those policies are in there so they can act according, okay? So sport federations acknowledge the importance of women contribution. Some organizations have started actions to increase the number of women in sport, increase women's participation in different roles, such as being teachers, coaches, judges, referees, researchers, journalists, leadership positions. It is so important, the academic research and publication to make it visible, because if it's not visible, then it won't happen, and more efforts are needed to incorporate girls and boys to school and to the physical education class. Because perhaps that is the only chance that kids could have to get in contact with anything related with sport. So that's why we need to assure that they receive their physical education class, okay? So I do believe that much can be gained if we join efforts, different efforts from all over the world. Thank you very much, muchas gracias. And I thank you in all, uh, in few of your languages, okay? Uh, that I was able to find out. And I really appreciate, appreciate this time uh, to have had it, this opportunity to exchange with you some ideas. Uh, you have more reference that are mentioned later here in that you can have a look, okay? And you can keep on exploring about that. 
So thank you very much. Namaste. Uh, hi, 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 hi. This echo. Sorry. It was a wonderful session, and thank you so much. I'm sure, though all those who listened have been benefited a lot because it's almost like an international conference that we had right now. Maybe that all of us cannot go out to the country. But you did give us an experience where we all had a feeling that we were attending an international event. And you made this happen. So, and the, the, it was very informative. But uh, before we wind up, we'll have some, uh, some of your colleagues are there with you. Your members are, have already joined. I saw some of them. Yeah. Okay. And now we have the questions. So, shall we read okay. out some of the questions? Yeah. Yes. Yes, if they are easy. I can't hear you. <laughs> Just if the questions are easy. Yeah, okay. I think, uh, I <laughs> uh, my my colleagues, uh, this is Darlene from uh, from uh, from Ixpe as well as uh, from the U.S. Rosa, I just wanted to tell you that, it, in my opinion, this is one Rosa, of the. There's one of the question, because most of the parents are stressing on academic pursuits and performance. Every parent wants the child to be a genius, so they push for academics. And the sport is not considered. So what could be done there? We could convince them, persuade them, so that they could get into. What are your views and suggestions, please? OK, there are two comments. You have a question, and Darlene was sure. also talking. So I will allow Darlene to continue the idea. and. Uh, and then I will answer, okay? Just, uh, just very quickly, uh, I wanted to let all of our part participants know that uh, the information and the You also the can check the question and answer box, man. No, yeah, I just, no, no, wait, wait one minute. One minute. Uh, okay, the, the way in which all of this was presented in this session was absolutely outstanding. And the How could we encourage girls, particip girls and women participation in a country like India? I think you've seen some things are much better. Women have made India proud. And you talk about that's very selective, very few. But how is it possible to encourage more women and girls into sport? Go for it, Rosa. <laughs> Okay, listen, I mean, the first question addressed the issue of the status of physical education, basically, in, the, in, in culture, in the culture itself, in which most of the time, uh, there is a preference from, so in society, I would say parents, but in society in general, to praise someone to study more chemistry, physics, and mathematics, which I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that, okay? But then to just look down for those who are in the area of physical education or who decides to uh, study of physical education. I think we need to educate parents. We need to educate society in the sense that all the subjects that are in the education system is to educate a human being that is able to have a biological and psychological and physical development according to what is expected to live in a, so, in a healthy society. So I think there's one element that we educators, and I'm saying I'm an, edu an educator, maybe we have failed because if still we have society, we have parents that are indicating that it is more important other subjects that one subject than the other, it is telling even to the organizations, it is telling to the ministries of education, it is telling the education system that the choice they have done is wrong. So we have, because it's not, it, I mean, this is not an issue just for physical education teachers. This is also an issue for the authorities, for the international authorities, for the authorities in each government, in which if we indicate there are six subjects and all of them are compulsory. So all of them have to be respected. So I think we all have to cooperate in order to make 
physical education to get its value because it's already proven that it brings benefit to human beings to an as an individual but also in society in general all the benefits are already indicated in the literature now you also ask me how a country like india could do in order to make more women participate i, I know and i know there are excellent achievements of indian women in sport now i think i think it's quite important uh, first of all to provide a place to provide a platform first for all girls to participate first to be in school and also to have physical education class because the, it starts there i mean it starts there then he, she can have a broader views she can participate much more it is not just in there but in many places that kids or girls prefer to have nails nice nails or just not to break or or to be sweat in a physical education class because maybe they are not aware of the importance that it is to be physically active i mean you not you don't have to be perfect but we have to make people understand that it is as it is important to brush your teeth it is as important to walk daily to participate in physical activity is a habit that has to be created since young age so the best effort that we can do is to make it possible for everybody to participate in physical education class since they are very young the other thing is to make visible women's achievements and one of the elements is that most of the time we don't make them visible okay it's and uh, it's quite impressive in many countries in many cultures they don't even know who are some of their PE teachers women who have made a difference we even when we study the history of physical education we know lots of men we lo lots of saying i'm not saying that that's wrong what i am indicating is that if you give role models if you give visibility to women who have excelled to have done I mean to not just uh, have a to get money but it's also to have a life that makes them have a healthy lifestyle this also can promote can support many more girls to participate the other element is if i am in an organization and I, as a parent i mean as i go to that organization and i just see men and I don't see women participating as leaders or as coaches, I would say, should I leave my kid there or should I take my kid and go to another place? So we need to have our, our the organizations need to be mixed, need to be inclusive, need to have people from with different background information without discrimination as it is indicated in the human rights declaration and, and all the declarations we know and if, even if people don't want to go back to 1948, we'll just take the 2015 uh, uh, fundamental um, physical education, physical activity and sport declaration in there, the, or review the cast and action plan. So I think all the governments, I mean, have the policy in there, have, they have signed agreements in, with the UN, UNESCO, you name it, so there you can go and there is budgeting there because if it is in the national agenda then more projects can be uh, developed oh, it's indeed nice listening to you ma'am uh, i think uh, because when you talk of unesco who a person who's interacted into such sessions it is so fortunate to hear from you may i request uh, kluka can you say something uh, let me uh, first uh, congratulate uh, Rosa. This is uh, one of the finest uh, presentations I've uh, been privileged to uh, listen to uh, by her on this topic. Uh, truly, she is uh, one of the most knowledgeable on the topic uh, anywhere in the world, and uh, it's a privilege to have us uh, know you at this time. Um, I think a couple of questions really need to be answered locally through globally. 
how much investment do we as humans want to make in the mind, the body, and the spirit connection? We cannot yet live outside of our bodies and expect us to be contributing people to humanity. That said, the mind, body, spirit connection, and I don't mean spirit in religion, I mean something that's greater than ourselves and is able to uh, influence how we live our lives. Uh, the second piece is um, girls particularly need to be confident in their bodies. And one of those ways is to know their bodies through physical education and physical activity. But it's also important for boys to see that girls have value inside and outside the home. Terribly important. Also, um, uh, my father used to tell me uh, that because I was born a girl, uh, I have to be twice as good to be see perceived as half as good as the boys, as if I were a boy. Unfortunately, that still happens to be true. My question to you uh, who are men, and if you only have girls, do you want the same kinds of educational access and opportunities for success as you do your girls, as your boys? That means that if I am a man and I have only girls or I have only a girl, I should get that message. I should truly get that message. So how can we build an educational society with acknowledging the value that men and women play to hold up their half of the world? That's how we must begin to think about these things, uh, in my humble opinion, but I think also globally, uh, we are coming to more of a revelation about this terribly important because we are missing out on voices that can truly make a difference in our current status. Thanks. Thank you, Kluka. Uh, Kishore, sir, so just before we wind up, so please. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Professor Nosa, New Base Man. It's a wonderful presentation. We appreciate, we are really excellent uh, one. I think uh, most of the participants also, they have Communicated. Uh, am I audible, Professor Can you can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank. You. So I just was, uh, you know, it was a wonderful presentation. Congratulations and a uh, lot of uh, good response from the participants. We are getting that it was the contents was very good. You are given a bird's eye view of uh, what's happening in the field of the physical education. And community coaching worldwide, citing examples from the, uh, the forum of ministers, UNESCO, and all other international elite forums, and also given a broad light into how exactly we should proceed, how uh, what should be the pathway. I really congratulate and Madam Darley also could uh, supplement the views with uh, valid examples and points on how it has to be applied on each side maybe girl with specific relevance to the without discrimination to gender. I congratulate both the speakers, Rosa Madden, for the excellent presentation and uh, we value your time and efforts. Appreciate. Thank you very much and all the very best. Thank you. Good day. Thank you very much for your kind words, Dr. Gishor. I, well, I had the chance to, maybe the audience, they don't know, but I, we had the chance to be together in one of the Congress. It was wonderful uh, to know and to hear more information about India, the presentation he gave. And it was, I mean, just a surprise when I was contacted to uh, this 
uh, course, this 25 day course to participate and to see that he was there. And I was like, wow, it's amazing. It's a small world. So we have to behave properly every time because I wasn't, I mean, there was no idea. I mean, our, our contact was so, through Dr. Usha with whom we in the APESCA, we we're having right now a project that is Women and Sport in Asia. I mean, this is a project as a publication that is also supported by ICSPE. So uh, through her, it's where all, I mean, we started this contact and this connection uh, worldwide. And that's why it's so important. And I, the present, when she asked me, we want to know more about Yapescave, that you get to know, I mean, this is the actual board in which you see that there are people from all continents. And it has always been like this. There has been always been a push to have uh, people represented all areas because we are a volunteer organization and we are always willing to support and to help others to promote the vision and mission of the Apescave. And uh, I know it's quite uh, sometimes difficult to understand why you have those people dedicated and doing these sort of things and, and research. Well, because we believe in so, we believe in the chance, we believe in the possibility to participate and to mentor. I think it's so important to mentor. I would say that I wouldn't be here in Yapesca if 15 years ago, well, maybe more than 15 years ago, I haven't met Darlene Kluka and Margaret Talbot and uh, Tansin Ben, all those former Yapesca uh, presidents who were uh, working and doing participating in women and sport activity. So those, that's how we get connected. So we pass the boy, but we also try to incorporate many others. And we have done with Dr. Usha and also with uh, the person uh, who participated with us in 2016 publication in order to have a chapter and to know a bit more about India. So I think it's so important because this topic is so much involved. I mean, uh, and of course, it's a depth that we as human beings, the society have with women, with women and girls. I mean, it's a depth. And we know that even nowadays, in spite of all the talks and conversations that have been going on, I mean, we still have many women who don't have access to education, who are living in poor situations, miserable situations, and being mistreated because of just being women. So. That's why it's so important that you have incorporated, I mean, us in here, I mean, a voice at least to highlight this topic because this is addressed to teachers. I mean, this is addressed to PE teachers. I mean, normally in the education context, kids get closer to the PE teacher for various reasons that is also in the literature. And then it is so important that our PE teachers are aware of the importance of making society fair or giving chance to everybody because we can have a better society. We can have a very better society because we all got potentials and nobody has the right to discriminate others based on that. And particularly if we not just uh, pray this, but also practice this. And teachers, I mean teachers, you all, you all are so important to make these changes happen. And you are the drivers, you are the movers. I mean, physical education teachers, we are privileged to have the access to smile, to laugh, to enjoy, to embrace, to practice, to explain with a cricket, football, or baseball uh, lesson, mathematics, history, geography, and you name it. Okay, so we have this chance. So we can provide, I mean, support. So for you to keep going, to keep growing, but make it, make it happen in the sense that we PE teachers, we need to make a change. Nobody is going to say, no one is going to say that PE teachers, I mean, outside our area, each profession is concerned about the area. We have to worry and we have to pray. We have to stand there and make it be respected. We don't need others to ask us to be for the respect. We have to stand there and respect the time for physical education, respect the inclusion of all kids, because remember, just think that each one of those kids is your kid, is your relative. So we want the best for them. 
We want the best. So we have the chance. We are blessed to be educators. I mean, this is a profession that really makes it possible to get into many, many lives, to influence many, many lives, to challenge I mean, what is in there. But we can do with love, with caring, but also don't ever forget the importance to include all, okay? Thank you. So on behalf of the ministry, you the Peasant Sports, Kelundia, thank you so much. And Rosa, we expect you to be with us throughout the entire sessions, at least pop in. And uh, you have helped us in getting almost reached about 10 to 12 countries participating in this event is a big achievement for, for uh, I say ministry. That's great. And your friends are already logged in from various parts of the country. And it's nice to see a mix of the entire world in this small place. So once again, I need to thank you, but it's not the end. We expect you to be here and your organization to join with us and help us in getting India to its objective, what we have actually thought of. Thank you once again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kluka. Thank you. And see you Thank tomorrow you. at the same time. Thank you, Kishore, sir, for your valuable presence. I thank all the participants for having, having been here, but I'm sure that the participants would be given the information so that we'd have more number tomorrow. Once okay. again, thank you so much. My pleasure. And if you allow us, we can continue supporting. Okay? Bye. Thanks. Namaste. Bye. Namaste. <laughs>